Oren, you're very welcome to the ScaleX Insider Podcast. I'm absolutely delighted and thrilled to be speaking with you today. Uh, well, you know, you might not be so delighted 30 minutes from now. <laughs> I've read your book. I'm really, really looking forward to this. So, look, I shared with you just before we came on air, our vision is to inspire, connect, and enable millions of ambitious leaders of small and medium-sized enterprises to scale with yeah. purpose. The question I pose to all of our wonderful guests is what does scaling with purpose mean to you, Oren? Yeah, for me, I want to give entrepreneurs the ability to grow using capital, to talk to the capital markets without sacrificing their mission and their purpose uh, by having to take in money. Because I believe you can do two things. You can raise money and you can maintain control of your vision. Now, you're, most people say, yeah, of course, that's basic. Like I run my company, I'm the CEO of the company, I drive the vision, I've been running for five, the day you take professional money, that vision ends and their vision begins. And my job and my purpose and the thing that makes me wake up in the morning and come to work is to stand between the, the entrepreneur and bad capital. There's, so when you take, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who say, well, you know, I still control 51% of my business, you know, so I'm, you know, I have control. You have no control. When an investor comes in, these are professional investors who control businesses from the minority stake. That's what they, that's what they know how to do. That's what they're designed to do. So even if they have 5% of the business, they have liquidation preferences, they have drag along rights, they have super majority voting rights, they have sale, uh, sale approval rights, uh, and you cannot do anything. You want to spend $10,000 in a lot of investment scenarios, you're gonna go ask the board of directors if you can spend it. The day you take professional money is the day your vision screeches to a halt. And, and we can get into the mechanics of that. That is not just philosophical. Don't let the door slam, thank you. That is not a philosophical vision of, of how the world works. That is a tactical, financial, practical reality. Uh, and, and we can plumb why this happens mathematically and financially that investors take over your business put their vision in it and drive it in a direction you never wanted to go. Don't think is necessarily a good vision go, but most importantly, you give up on your purpose, values, and vision for the company. And now it's just a goddamn company and you have a job. So yeah. that's my purpose to, to stop that from happening. Brilliant. I love that and delivered very emphatically and passionately. Look, I'm really keen well, for- I, I might, I might say it this way. You might, you might sleep in your bed tonight. <laughs> But someday they'll come back, and that day you'll die in your bed. Straight out of Braveheart, my friend. Straight out of Braveheart. I'm, I'm, I'm really keen for us to have a, a mini masterclass on your, your strong framework, your strong method of pitching. Yeah. And strong, of course, is an acronym for setting the frame, telling the story, revealing the intrigue, offering the prize, nailing the hook point, and getting a decision. So, uh, and I, I love this book and you explained something right at the outset and Professor Damien Hughes in their very first season leaned on the work of Professor um, uh, Paul McLean, I think it was, and described the triune brain system. And you mentioned this, that we don't pitch well because there's an evolutionary flaw in our brain, a wiring plug yeah. in our hardware that we must understand and learn to deal with if we're ever going to pitch successfully. Share with the listeners, Oren, what you mean by that. So what happens is we believe that when we are speaking our ideas, we have a SaaS software that can uh, you, you plug into QuickBooks and it keeps track of your accounting and your expenses and it red flags at, uh, when you're getting too close to getting an, an IRS audit. That's what we do, okay? I mean, I just made it up. We don't do that. But that's, that's a SaaS software. All right, so now we meet somebody and we go, hey, uh, yeah, I'd love to have you invest in our company. We're doing $3 million. I think we'll do $30 million over the next two years. We're currently at a $20 million valuation. Our SaaS software is able to prevent audits. Uh, we have 22 people. We have a, uh, a programming team. 
in Eastern Europe, so we have low cost there, and we have 20 logos of some of the best companies in America currently in pilot. So you say that to the investor. But the investor, and so that, that's what we know how to do because that's how we think. Linguistic, smart, mathematical, you know, we have these thoughts in our head and we just want to send these thoughts over to the investor, like a fax machine, right? You're too young, but <laughs> fax machines used to go like this. And then, and then the other fax machine would go like alien speech and go, and then the fax machine would talk to each other and the fax would come over and then it would download on the other side and you're like, oh yeah, here's the order form, right? So we, that's, that's the, the paradigm. That's how we think it works. But when you are communicating all this information to another person, what happens is it actually goes into their brainstem first. It's the first place to absorb it. And it's very, uh, um, uh, what I call the crocodile brain, right? And that part of the brain goes, I, I, I am hearing words. Why, why am I hearing words? Oh, and then, uh, what is going on here? Oh, something is moving and talking to me. Is this something I should eat? Is this something I should fuck? Is this something I should kill? Those are the three choices I have. And you're going, yeah, and the SaaS software and they're comparable as a public company and we have a relation with Intuit. And it's going, yeah, I better fucking kill it. <laughs> so that the first part of the brain to begin interactions with you is not prepared for the things that you were starting to say. What it's prepared for is, um, you know, does this affect me at a survival level? And so practically, and uh, we're not evolutionary, evolutionary prepared to introduce words about low stakes things like a business investment at a high stakes level. So in evolutionary terms, high stakes things are physical, eat, fight, kill, mate. And everything else really is not that critical to the mind, so it tries to block it out. Then the next part of the brain your message gets to is the midbrain, and the midbrain uh, is concerned with status. Is Brendan a king, a lord, a medical man, um, a soldier, somebody of high status, or is he a valet, a janitor, a gardener? Not to be cruel to people who have those professions. Those are low status professions. Status is made out of celebrity. It's made out of wealth and it's made out of uh, power. And that's where status comes from. So is this somebody with celebrity? Is this somebody with wealth? And is this somebody with political power? No? Okay, fuck off, right? Because the, the, the neocortex, which is the, the third part of the brain that you wanna talk to, it understands SaaS software, 20 customers growing at 25%, year over year CAC of $1.2, which is 20%. That's the neocortex. That part of your brain evolutionary, evolution, from an evolutionary standpoint has a rule. And it says, do not send me any information about a problem I've solved before, a problem I can guess the solution of, or a problem from a low status individual. I do not want to work hard on easy problems. So if your problem has no stakes, you're a low status person, and the problem that you're talking about looks easy to solve, no chance somebody pays attention to it. That's what I, I mean. I, I, I love that, and it's the first time that I've, that I've heard our pitching articulated in that way in terms of we're sending information that's been processed through or filtered through our neural cortex but it's actually being received by the croc brain and ultimately what we're trying to do is open a pdf with microsoft word and they're just not compatible yep. and you're never you know the content all the beautiful content contained in that pdf document is never going to be opened or received by the the microsoft word uh, software and I, I that, yeah. that just made so much sense to me so let's get into this then how do we using the the strong method of pitching how do we get the you know the crock brain to process the the wonderful pitch that we have so if we can dive into to each of them so setting the frame begin sure. with set the frame Fr frames I, I think you have to read the book to understand frames. It would take us a while. Like it, 
it's written as we that one chapter took more time to write yeah. than the rest of the entire book. Yeah. Frames is a complex subject. Ish, but but you understand the term because you have a time frame, right? Um, you have a window frame. So frames focus a view of something. Now we had an office not not uh, far from here, and it had two windows. Uh, one window was overlooking one side of the office overlooked the ocean. Right uh, and the beach, and you could look out the window and see girls running around in bikinis, and people surfing, and would literally whales dancing in the waves and dolphins. Right, that's the side my office was on. By the way, my company. <laughs> Lucky right? man. Micah's office was on the other side. Right, and he looked out his window and he got to see the five freeway and a bunch of uh, buildings under construction and some um, gravel yards uh, and and un unbuilt mainly the freeway. So the largest freeway in Southern California. So that was his frame, right? So we're looking at the same thing through a different lens. So in frame control, you're changing the lens from how somebody sees something. Now, if you want to make this practical, I think that the first thing you can do is to change the lens is to make the buyer or the investor understand that this is a high stakes conversation because they're coming in with a frame I'm going to learn some stuff. I'm going to sit here, ask a couple questions, take some notes, go back, um, make no decisions, take no risk, probably not even do any interaction other than satisfy my needs for pricing in information. So I can then go to the internet. You know, I have with one option and I can find who makes this in China for free. <laughs> That's my goal as a buyer. So we have to reset that frame. That's a low stakes frame. I'm going to get some information. I'm going to give as little commitment as possible. I'm going to walk away with great knowledge and no commitment, right? And so the frame I come in with is, hey, good to meet you. I'm very short on time, right? We have to get to a decision today on what we're doing together. Total frame reset. I'll give you a couple other frame resets that you can do and try and watch what happens when you change the frame? Uh, so, so Brendan, do you do you talk to investors? You know, from now and then. I do. Okay. Uh, ever had investor? Ever had an investor in a big deal show up to a call on time? <laughs> no, it's typically walking into a room with a room full of them and uh, okay. lots okay. of eyes looking at you. Sure. Great. So, um, I'll give you the reset for that. Let's just talk about a call because it's an easy one. If you're going to talk to investors that are that are big relative to the size of your company, they come late. Four to eight minutes late is about you know the measured average we have. They'll come you know up to 15 minutes late. One thing they will not do is come earlier on time. So this is what I developed the frame reset. So that frame is your time is not valuable. My time as the investor is more valuable than yours. So I'm happy to waste 10 minutes of your time for this call. Not only waste 10 minutes of your time, what's 10 minutes, you know, relative to a $5 million investment, but, but I'm happy to take away from you 10 minutes of your time or 15 minutes of your time to tell your story, right? Because my time is valuable and your time is not. So that has to be reset immediately. And the way I reset that, and I've done this a thousand times, is, uh, uh, hey, Brandon, are you here for the 1004 call? Because... Because the 10 o'clock call is just wrapping up. So we can start the 1004 call now if you want. And, and so I've had billionaires go, I'm so sorry. Because they understand the value of time. And it resets. My time is as valuable as yours. And everybody knows, right? And so ultimately, the fr and I'll give you another one. We have an a entrepreneur we just helped raise $5 million. She was going to all these meetings. And they were going, yeah, yeah, interesting. Uh, company looks a little bit small. We'd like to see it have a little bit more traction. So she's like, oh, I'm so disappointed. I'm going to all these meetings, taking up a bunch of time. And, and um, they're telling me uh, that the deal is, uh, you know, too small for them and it looks interesting. So what I taught her is to say, stop. Don't ever say that to another entrepreneur like me again. First of all, you had the deck. You know the size of the deal. You know... Um, you do this professionally, you know exactly what's going on, right? More importantly, I'm an AI engineer. I get, I left a job at Facebook that was $500,000 a year and I started this company. So what you did 
is you stopped an entrepreneur from working at her company, stopped her doing from AI programming, the most valuable job in technology today, to drive across the valley to meet you for a bullshit meeting. Now, I don't even understand who you guys are. Why don't you tell me um, what, why don't you tell me what is really going on here so I can understand and communicate to my peers across the valley what really goes on here at Sequoia? Because this is nonsense. Now, you can say that. You can say that because the frame is about work. You see the framing? You have the most valuable job in Silicon Valley. You stopped an entrepreneur in a three-person company from working, from doing work, to drive across the valley for a bullshit meeting. Yeah, unless, it, it, now, unless you can convince me, right, and the, the reframe on that, unless you convince me this actually is a valuable meeting and I'm misunderstanding you. And then 100% of the time, no, 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 we're like, we would never do that. Like, we believe in entrepreneurs. And then they start to frame a path forward. These are all frame resets, right? You don't live in them, right? Then that space is gone and you move on. A frame reset is like a fire and forget missile, like a stinger, right? A stinger is not an AK-47. You know, you don't carry it around for three days. <laughs> stinger, you load one, then they <laughs> throw it away, and then you run forward to your next objective. That's a frame reset. Okay, sorry, where were we? Um, that, framing. Yeah, and, and, and that just before we move on, or in, that takes a huge amount of confidence to, you know, if you think of the, you think of, and the listeners to the Scalex Insider podcast, for many of them, they may be approaching a pitch for the first time. This is all new sure. to them to go and raise well, capital to scale their business. But let me make it easy. Let me make it easy. Okay. It's not confidence. I, I do not teach confidence. I do not. I get entrepreneurs who are from India, bad accents, hard to understand. They're not hard to understand in India, right? They're under, hard to understand here, you know, because they're fresh off the boat or Chinese guys. Or when I go to China, I'm hard to understand, right? It's not a cultural uh, thing. So, so um, I have them come in. It, it's not that we teach them confidence. It's we teach them um, the how uh, to, to, to focus on the deal. Here's, what, here's the one thing we teach them that gives them instant confidence because they're shy about their accent. They're shy about their appearance. They're shy about their heritage. They're shy about their ability to communicate. They're shy about the look of the deck, you know, because they're not experts in that, you know, but they have a great technology. And here's how I give them all the confidence in the world. Capital is a commodity. Money in a, in a, a customer's money is a commodity. That is available anywhere. What you have is valuable. So your, the investor needs great entrepreneurs, decent companies, and good markets to invest in. That is extremely hard to find. Capital is available out of an ATM machine. You can get it from your uncle. There's, there's 50,000 angel investors within 100 miles of where you, the listener, are today. Capital is a commodity. What you have is valuable. Once you reset that frame in your mind, you don't need confidence. You are just working from the economics of supply and demand, right? And you are, so, so I recently bought a motorcycle. Uh, and, and, have, have you ever worked with a car salesman, you know, not in the pandemic, but before the pandemic? Yes. Right? They work pretty hard, right? I mean, if you, if you, if you walk in a car lot, you know, 10 years ago, in 2008, 2010, and you go, hey, I'm looking for a car. I have no money. Uh, I'm just looking around. I have no money. I don't have a job yet, but I'm just looking. That guy will spend two hours with you trying to sell a car, right? Working hard to get a sale. So that's why, because he has um, more supply of time than he has demand from buyers, right? Supply and demand. More supply of time than demand for buyers. So he'll spend an hour, two hours with you trying to sell you a car. Uh, I um, bought a motorcycle not long ago, you know, during the pandemic. Call up, find the last one in America, Kawasaki ZX-10R. I called the salesman. He's like, yeah, I have one. He goes, well, what? The, the, the MSRP is 18199 
$18,199. He goes, what do you want to offer? I go, well, I don't negotiate against myself. I mean, I'd be willing to offer you MSRP, but you know, I'd like a discount because typically. So he puts his hand over the phone and he, uh, he goes, hey, Jim, do you want to even talk to this douchebag? <laughs> <laughs> Last one in America. So I'm like, hey, hey. So I don't like being called a douchebag when I'm trying to you know, spend $20,000. But because of the economics of supply and demand, I become a supplicant. I'm like, hey, 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 I'm not that bad. I'm defending my douchebaggery. Hey, I'm not, I'm not that bad. I didn't mean, I'm, I apologize. Look, what, what do you think is fair? Right? And he goes, it's not that. Uh, he goes, listen, man, I do 24, 24,000, right? The MSRP is 18,000. Economics of supply and demand. So I go, listen. That's fair. I'll take it, right? And that's how I negotiated supply and demand. So when you believe that capital is an overwhelming uh, resource that has high supply and that you and your company is scarce and in high demand, which is true, then you don't need motivation. You just need um, to reflect the economics of supply and demand with your time and it, so, so lots of things, when people start getting off, give you another perfect example of frame control. You're working with a buyer or an investor, right? And they go, hey, the specifications of your um, unit that you sell are, you know, are seem to be like quite incredible. You're like, yeah, you know, we have an incredible technology. Well, you know, it seems like better than anything else in the market. Yeah, dummy. That's like why we're here. We have a better solution than what you have today. That's why I'm spending my time to show you what we have. I have other things to do with my time, but we have the best one and it's to fit for solving your problem. And then they always go, listen, I really, uh, I have some technical questions. Can you really process at 0.01 microns, you know, at 20,000 bits per second with two parallel outputs, right? And so, a hundred out of a hundred entrepreneurs or salespeople will go, yeah, we could do that. Like, let me show you and dive into that technical subject. But the entrepreneur who believes that uh, he, there's more demand for his time um, than he has supply of his time will say, listen, those are great questions. Here, but that is a two hour conversation for us to fully walk to the specs, do a demo and defend our technology. There is no way I can do a competent job of that in five to eight minutes here. Here's what I'd like you to do. We are here today to say, do we like each other? Uh, do our circles overlap in terms of, do we have a solution that solves your problem? And as much as you're evaluating us, we also have to leave some time for us to evaluate you because we're choosy about who we work with. And in fact, if you gave me a quarter million dollar contract today and signed it with wet ink, I'd give it back to you and say, we're not interested. I don't know enough about you to take an order. So here's what I suggest. You suspend disbelief that we produce these specifications as advertised. Microsoft is an investor in us. Like they have a compliance department. I mean, it would be the biggest problem in the history of the SEC if we couldn't do this, but suspend this belief, we actually do this. Let's figure out, and, and um, if we get to somewhere today and we have to get a decision, are we moving forward or we just leave each other's name in a Rolodex, hail fellow well met, and we each go our different ways. One of those two things needs to happen today. I go back, you go back to the coal mine, you take your problem. By the way, you have this problem about as bad as we've ever seen it, <laughs> right? Well, if it gets any worse, I wouldn't even be interested in coming in here and letting you have the investment or what, like you're sort of the, on the edge of having the problem in order to be able to work with someone like us to solve it. So we have some things to accomplish today. Would I be willing to work with you and your company? The second thing is, do we like each other? Right. We've been talking for 15 minutes. I clearly, I like you guys as an account. I have some questions. Like there's some things on the website that don't make sense to me, you know, and they're different from what I see here on the ground. And I'd like to square those circles somehow, right? So there's some there's issues that have to be resolved. Um, is, is your problem, um, you know, uh, um, if, 
can we, uh, would we be willing, you know, to offer to fix your problem? We, that's what we have to figure out here today. If we do that, then we can do a breakout session, take your engineer and my engineer, put them in a room together with a big thousand page spiral notebook, three laptops and a mass spectrometer and let them do diligence on the specifications. But let's figure out if we like each other, if we can work together, if I'm willing to solve your problem, and we can do all of that in 45 minutes. The two hour meeting with the mass spectrometer has to happen once we are in general agreement. And I've been in those meetings so many times with the, with the buyer you know, the, that heads up the procurement function for a multi-billion dollar company, and he's responsible for buying laptops one day and you sure. know, loading shovels the next day and, you know, yeah. and everything in between. And what I found is they want to get you to price as quick as they possibly can, and they want to... Uh, demystify what's taking you years to develop so that they can put it in a spreadsheet that's easy to compare with the next nearest competitor. How, sure. you know, what, what we're saying here is this is about not allowing them to take that frame, but to, for you to control the frame. It's, and it, and I've, you know, I've been there that requires a huge amount of, of confidence, especially when you're talking about multi-million dollar projects and the procurement time could be anything from, you know, the lead time in these can be anything from three months to three years. And, you know, when you're, when you're, <laughs> when there's that level of desperation to, to close this out, what do we, what do we do around even our own psyche or in our own mindset to get us in a place where we're indifferent? We can, you know, we, we're literally sure. prepared to walk away. Let's, let, let's role play here. Um, I'm the seller and you're the procurement buyer. All right. Um, so Brendan, uh, you know, we, we have, uh, you know, we can deliver, meet your RFP of 10,000 units. Um, you know, on the schedule that you've discussed, we have the best unit in the market. It outperforms the next guys down by, you know, 50%. You know, you've seen, obviously you invited us here uh, for a reason. I've got, you know, one of the issues with me is we have, uh, you know, there's a lot of demand and you guys are a big order, right? So in order for us to fulfill your order, we've got to set aside a huge amount of capacity. So, um, you cannot dip your toe in these waters, right? You might be working with, you know, all kinds of people, but right now you're sitting across the table from the not fucking around crew. We have it, we can deliver it, and we're the number one reliable source. So the counterparty risk is not really us. We deliver this stuff every day. To us, the counterparty risk is you in the way that you would hang this order out over us uh, have us scramble around, change our capacity and everything, and in the last minute, change the side of the order or not place it. So if I have a hint of that happening, I'm out. There's more demand for, and you're going to want pricing concessions because of your volume. We understand that. So I came to this meeting not to travel across the country and uh, play, uh, you know, footsie and tickle under the table. All right. We got to get to somewhere. And by the way, a no is perfectly fine. What, how can I help you? What questions do you have? Where I, um, give me a strong signal of where you are on this relationship. Yeah, what, what I was typically faced with, Oren, was the, well, look, that's all oh, very yeah, just, well. We're role playing. Yeah, well, we're look, that's, that's, that's all very well, Oren. Uh, your next nearest competitor, and you know who they are, I, are saying that they can match all the specifications. In fact, their lead time is, is, is much Brandon, better than Brandon, yours. And their Brandon, pricing is more competitive. Brandon, stop saying that. Stop saying that. Listen, I am here working with you one-on-one. -on -one. We have what we have. We're not worried about those motherfuckers, okay? Those gentlemen. I'm telling you again, if you hold somebody else's order over our head, we'll walk, okay? I, am, I will negotiate with you freely, flexibly, honestly, and transparently one-on-one -on -one with what we have. Two things. I feel like it is a, a, a small sign of integrity problems to take somebody else's pricing information, delivery information, 
and show it to me. So I don't want to see it and I don't want to hear about it. Do not disclose to me what any of my competitors are doing. That would be outside of my value system. Secondly, I need to see that you are able to negotiate with me and focus one-on-one -on -one and not um, uh, hold somebody else's pricing, which may or may not be real. I have no idea if they can deliver it. You know the story of the, uh, uh, the woman who goes into the bread shop, Brendan, and she says, um, um, hey, you know, bread across the street is a dollar, you know, and you're selling it for $4. You know, uh, um, and the the proprietor of the bread shop says, "Yeah, except we have it." <laughs> and so, I don't know what other people are offered, where they can deliver. Right? Do do not hold other people's pricing and economics over my head. I will literally walk away. That is yeah. not the value system that we have as a company. But what else? Can, what else can I help you with, Brandon? I mean, you probably. Um, yeah, but look, what are the, I, I, where, where are I would at? like to, I would like you guys to win the business, but look, I, you know, I have a role to play here. I'm just, you know, I, I have sure. to present to the board and, and ultimately I have to ensure that, that we're getting great value and ultimately. If, uh, Brandon, sorry to interrupt you. If, if you're not the decision maker or you don't have access to the decision makers, like I, I'm not changing, if I'm not talking to the person or we don't have access to the people who are involved in the decision-making, um, it's kabuki theater, all right? I understand you need to make a presentation, but I also need access and awareness and communication with the decision-makers. If you're saying, supply me, Brandon, with a bunch of information, and then I'm gonna run off to some magic star chamber committee that's gonna decide whether you get the contract or not, I'm out, okay? We need to be talking to decision-makers. So in general, holding the board over my head will not work. And are you prepared to come in and present to the board then? It, it, this is what we would love to do. We want to, we'll be efficient with your time. We'll be efficient with our time. We'll come in, we'll make a presentation. It'll be under 20 minutes, It'll be the best TED talk you ever saw. I'll tell you what, when I made the same presentation to GE, BP, Philips, Samsung, Baxter, Medtronic, uh, um, and uh, um, Global Footprint, all multi-billion dollar companies, they, uh, true story, they applauded and the chairman of the board said, hey guys, well, don't, don't applaud. This is one of our vendors. We don't applaud for our vendors. <laughs> and then they said, can you do it again? We wanna get Mark, Jim, Sarah, and Suzanne to watch the presentation. And they started calling their colleagues and saying, you gotta see this. This will be the best TED talk on the product you've ever seen. Let's do it in front of the board. What else can I help you with to well, sort well, of there facilitate? You go. We, we, we set that up, Oren, but I just want to let you know before you come into the board, you're 30% more expensive and actually you're delivering uh, six weeks later than, than, than you, you, you know who your competition is. But uh, look, we'd welcome you in to present. Look, look, are you, are you asking me, you know, what's the price? Yeah. You know, well, you ask me what, yeah. So listen, here, let me tell you the price, right? Truthfully, and I'm not trying to be uh, sarcastic here in any way. The price is more than you want to pay and less than I want to charge. That's the price. Okay. Now, within that, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to do open comedy night here, but within that is, is an actual price. But the price of what? I don't have... It's, it's a hypothetical. I don't have an order. I can't see a contract. I don't want to have my contract shopped. Here's what I can commit to you, right? When we get down to a final price per unit and total volume and delivery times, you, I, I commit to you. You'll go, that's exactly what we thought. It's completely fair. This is the right choice. You will not hear something that is off the grid. You will say, of all the choices we have, this is uh, this straight down the middle of the fairway. It's what we expected, but I don't have enough information to give you perfect pricing. I can tell you per unit is between $300 and $350. If $350 like blows your fucking mind and you can never, ever, ever get there in the history of any thinking whatsoever, board level, anything, then let's just say nice to meet you, keep each other's names in the Rolodex, come back around next year, next time right um if if 300 
is you know the only number that you can ever imagine agreeing to, then also hail fellow well met, Brendan. This has been awesome getting to know you. But if all you want is to induce pucker factor on our side and commit to three, let's figure out what you need, price it fairly, and be be working together this year and 10 years from now. We are not transactional, as I think you're hearing. If you want to buy the, you know, what we have, the premium product, the way the government buys toilets, it's, it's just we're not the right people for you. If you want a partner, if you want a relationship, if you want a counterparty, if you want to be doing this 10 years from now, if you want us to be there and be able to afford to fix any mistakes that will happen, then we'd be the right guys. You know, Brennan, here's the way I look at it. An order this size, something's going to go wrong. You guys aren't going to pay on time. We're not going to deliver on time. Some of the specifications, you know, in the first order, may, something is going to happen. It's impossible that an order of this size between two comp multi-billion dollar companies, um, uh, so between a multi-billion dollar company and a $10 million company, that something won't go wrong. So let's just agree. No matter who you pick, us, somebody else, I fly, I, you give me the order, I, I'm going home, I fly into the side of a mountain. Oh, that was so sad. Wah, wah. Or I flew in the side of a mountain, right? But now you have to go to a, a, you know, the next choice because I'm gone. Something will happen in that relationship. It's not will something go wrong, right? It's what happens between us. So true. And until we get there and we get on the other side of an irreconcilable problem, succession style where you i we screwed something up 100 percent, right and we're at fault and you're mad and you call me up and say hey orin i'm supposed to arrive yesterday it's not arriving the next week i'm super mad and there's nothing i can do to fix it and sorry won't walk the dog and we still are able to work together and move forward even though we're mad even though it's irreconcilable it that is a true relationship that we're looking for because that's how companies are built that's how orders are delivered that's how business are done if you want the lowest possible price on the fastest possible transaction for something that's not realistic between two people who are going to be in pure acrimony three months from now go get it that's not what we do I wish I'd read this 10 years ago you've just put me back in a room and I could see the person at the other side of the table <laughs> Uh, the, the the challenge has always been, Oren, with the with the global procurement people is that they're just it's that it's that coldness it's that uh, it's that tell them <laughs> to fuck off. They will come back, okay? You because here, if you work hard and win that business, what have you won? Mm -hmm. You have run yeah. a shitty partner yeah. who wants the lowest price yeah. and is doing global procurement. You have not won anything by winning yeah. that account yeah. unless somebody says i here's a frame reset i know we're trying to get past set the frame but framing is the most important we yeah. talk about so we'll we'll get a deal and they'll go great yeah um send us the paperwork um we're, we're gonna we've decided to go with you and so what's the first thing that i what do you think the first thing i, I say when i hear that is well where i always got to you know, you, you, you start to get into the T's and C's and you, 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 you're paranoid that something is hidden in there that... Uh, yeah, so, that, so watch this. Let's role play again. Um, you go ahead and tell me, hey, Oren, we've, we've um, you know, we thought about it and we decided to go with you. Yeah, Oren, look, delighted at your pitch and we've decided to go with you. Uh, like, honestly, Brendan, like, fuck off. Like, that, um, that's, to me, that's, there's so much work that needs to happen Oh yeah, we decided to go with you. Like send over, like those don't actually happen, right? I, I need you to say, Oren, I love you. We are excited about this and we can't imagine a better partner. And we're going into this de novo, clean slate, and we believe in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Until I hear that, I'm not powering up my entire, entire company. Oh yeah, we like you, send over an agreement. Like that's not how these things are done. So just, I'll make it easy on you because you seem like a, you know, a good guy that, you know, not effusive, emotional in business. Just say, Oren, I love you. Just Oren, I love you. It. I'm so excited about this project. I'm so excited about this project. And we're gonna be friends and partners and colleagues for years. And we're gonna be friends and partners and colleagues for years. Fuck yeah, Brandon, let's go do this thing. All right, I'm in.
and there is setting the frame, my friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is that this has always been the the most challenging aspect of of business, and certainly when there's pressure on winning business, when there's pressure on, you know, nursing and and coaxing that customer to the point but, where you're about to close and you know so there's a there's a psychological piece there or and where you know when you've invested in the relationship and certainly when when we were selling multi-million dollar projects and you know it takes a long time and you've you've invested emotionally uh not a, you know you've invested time money emotion in that that let me that, fix this let me fix this number one if you have a shitty counterparty and you win it, you have not won anything. Yeah. So now yeah. I have taken all the risk away. Because people say, I would never say those things, Orrin. I would never yeah. tell a, a, you know, someone who said, yeah, we're going to go with you. No. Yeah. Okay? I, I want a strong commitment to doing this. That is a weak commitment, and I think it can be broken. It's fragile, and I think it can be broken easily. I really would try to understand like the, the depth behind this. All right. So, and if somebody says, Hey, I'm not going to give you any depth. Like we said, we're going to go with you. Do you want it or not? Say no, you do not. If that is not a real is a fragile relationship that will cost you money. So you have no risk pushing back because if people fall up, right. You put, you push, uh, let me give you a quick example. We had a friend, uh, uh, we had a personal family friend who came out of the Navy SEALs. He then was hired by the Navy SEALs to train the Navy SEALs. And so he would go places like Snowbird and Utah and would invite my wife and I along because they'd get a, like up some rooms and we got to hang out with the Navy SEALs, right? Uh, and these are like bad, like, and they were doing high mountain weather training. Like when they, they invited me out to the hot tub, Right. Uh, so I walk out, it's freezing cold. You know, I walk out in my uh, sandals, you know, no shirt, no shoes, just a towel. And they're all standing around the hot tub and they're just talking Navy SEAL talk, like, you know, Jeeps and weapons and tanks and everything. Like that. And I'm sitting there freezing. I'm like, Hey guys, are we, like, you guys want to get in the pool? Right. And, and they're like, Hey, who brought this tool? And they're just sitting out there for 15 minutes talking. I'm like, huh. and then I had to get in the hot tub by myself because I was freezing cold. You know, they're all standing around no shirts um, in the freezing cold because they're Navy SEALs and I'm, you know, uh, I work in finance. So um, then eventually, but where this is going, uh, eventually that guy, uh, we called this, we used to do something twice a week with him and his wife, my wife and I, right? And uh, I called his phone and just, eh, 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 like really weird. And we never heard from them again. Poof, popped smoke, right? My wife was best friends with his wife. He and I used to ride motorcycles and hang out and do beach walks and runs twice a week. Poof, gone. So in my mind, I was like, what did I do to offend this couple, right? That they were just never best friends that would never talk to us again. And then I was talking to another Navy SEAL and he's like, do you think, Eric, like you like said, you took the last beer and he's a Navy SEAL out of Afghanistan, out of Iraq, lived in the dirt. Like, you know, had to pee in his own pants for, you know, days straight with no food. And you, like, took his last beer and he never talked to you again, right? It, it wasn't you, right? These relationships are not so fragile that you, you know, didn't return a call or took the last beer or showed up 10 minutes late that a fucking Navy SEAL who has lived through the shittiest shit that shit ever had is like, I'm mad at you. They were in some program and their time here ended and their cover ended, and now they're somewhere else. And that's how they live, right? So the takeaway is if you poke at these relationships and they fall apart, they never existed for real in the first place. Yeah. So if you say to someone, oh, the way I always test this is I listen to what people are saying, and then I look at their homepage of their website. And 100% of the time, there's something on the homepage that doesn't foot square with what they're saying. Hey, Brandon, you said you're the number one protagonist advocate for small to medium enterprises, right? Um, you know, on the website, except for 
you know, the whole podcast is about something that would help small businesses and not medium enterprises. I can't really square what you're saying on your website with what we're doing in person. Help me bridge that gap. Now, if I said that and I thought our relationship would, our new relationship that's an hour old would break on that premise, then um, if it, if, if our new relationship would break on that simple question, because that was too tough for you to handle, right? We were never going to have a good relationship anyway. So how important is understanding your values and living your values in terms of making that decision, whether it's alignment in this, this relationship or not? is everything. Because then we're now we're moving in the next chapter. If you cannot do this, if you cannot stand up for your time, if you cannot reframe your, the value, if you cannot honestly talk about the economics of supply and demand, if you let somebody push you around on price, if you let somebody hang over your head somebody else's offer, okay, then you are framed as a low status individual. And now you have a high status person talking to a low status person. Status is everything. Until the buyer or investor perceives you as a peer, he will not make a fair deal. I'll say it again. Until the buyer or investor perceives you as a peer or even a superior, he will continue to grind on you because he has control. Until you signal you do not have control, right? We are in a counterparty, counterparty relationship, or I'm in control, you will continue to get ground on until the price is below market. Think about it this way. When you have low status, what you are doing is you're elevating someone to be powerful over you. When somebody is powerful over you, physiologically, this is not conscious, physiologically, they will do three things. One, they will take more risks around you than they would with a peer. Second thing, they will only see you as a, at a surface level, uh, not as a person, right? But as a, as a conduit to achieving a, you know, a, 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 you know, a goal. And third is they will behave transactionally. So if they, have, if they have power over you and most people start like this and they just move themselves to the low status supplicant position. So here you are and for no good reason, you will say, oh, hey, no problem. Uh, we can start late, sure. You know, um, uh, no problem you came late, down, right? Uh, hey, we have a pitch for you. And, um, hey, Brendan, uh, you know, it looks like we had an hour for the meeting, but it looks like I only have 30 minutes. No problem, no problem. Okay, lower. Um, hey, uh, interrupt me at any time if you have any questions. Oh, I don't even trust my own presentation. Lower, right? So we lower our own status for no good reason. We let the frame become, we are a salesperson. We're supplicating and trying to win your approval and you know, your order. When you're trying to win somebody's approval, you put yourself in the low status position. When you're in the low status position, the other person is going to take risks around you that he would not take with a peer, and he's going to only see you transactionally, not as a long-term relationship. That's the reality of status. Yeah, and how do we, how do we ensure we maintain our status as a partner in this relationship so that the relationship is a 50-50, especially when we're pitching to senior executives of much larger companies you know, they know we're a 10, 20, 30 man company, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're turning over hundreds of millions, if not billions. And Micah, Micah, get over here. <laughs> I'm going to show you how get over here. Per Micah. How old are you again? 24. He's a 24 year old calls 55 year old investors and CFOs. Come on camera here. Micah. All right, let's uh, let's role play. Um, so this would be a light space. Ring. Hello. Uh, I'm the. I'm calling you. Yeah, you're calling me. Hey, Orin. Yeah. Oh, Who's this? Yeah. Hey, Orin. This is uh, Micah from 
uh, intersection capital. Okay. Uh, hey, um, I, I don't think we've ever spoken before, but my managing director, why don't we give you a buzz, run a series A deal by you, and then we can get sort of a quick yes, no. Uh, sure, what's the deal? Yep, so real simple, it's a precision VR uh, augmented reality hardware company. So 12 million capital in, um, 63 full-time staff fully commercialized, revenues accelerating, uh, pilots and clients are with Siemens, uh, Qualcomm, Johnson Johnson, Smith and Nephew, 30 shipping to the dream list of purchase orders. Uh, I believe you're tracking in the VR space. I mean, of course you are, but wanted to gauge your interest in our this precision VR company. Again, they're um, shipping every device they can make and um, the, they're absolutely dominant in the uh, healthcare beachhead far ahead of HoloLens. Uh, FPM or 412 revenue will scale through 8 million, 20 million if pipeline continues at current pace. Awesome, thank you, I'm in. Send me, the, send me the teaser. So what you just saw there is a 24 year old talking to a 55 year old as an insider, as a peer. Yeah, I put him on the spot and everything like that, right? But did you hear any say like any low status, I'm a salesperson. No, no. You know, this is, I'm in your industry, no. right? I have a deal which is in alignment with you. This is what they have. What do you want me to do? It is talking as an insider, not as a salesperson trying to win approval for a contract. So here's the secret. You talk to these uh, you know, CFOs or purchasing managers in the same way that they talk to themselves. You don't talk as a salesperson. When one purchasing manager from, uh, give you a perfect example, when a purchasing manager from Costco you know, cannot get baby formula, right? And he has to call his counterparty at Target. Does he call up and say, hey, Jim, um, I'm really glad I caught you. Listen, um, if you have a few minutes, I'd like to run something by you. If you don't, we can reschedule, you know, really quick. But, you know, I, I just, I have an idea that I think would be, uh, you know, really beneficial to you. Yeah, what is it? Well, um, so, you know, we're, we're running low on formula and would really like to find a way that we could, you know, maybe buy some of yours. If, if, if you'd be willing to take a contract, I can send it over. Um, you know, I can call you back next week. We could run through it and see if it's something you guys be agreeable. We really, you know, be solving a lot of problems, right? Is that how they, one contracting professional talks to another? No, like, I, I don't know the space at all, but I'm just going to imagine it. It's, hey, Jim, listen, we know you've got, 50, uh, you know, thousand units in surplus, your public company, and we see the data. Look, we're short 30,000 units. I know you need some overhang to, you know, fulfill supply in case you run short, but we need to fill store racks. And it is a moral imperative that we get this formula out there. I'm sending you over an agreement. I can't imagine a world in which you wouldn't give us 20 to 30,000 units. Does that work for you? We'll pay you 10% over market. We know pricing is an issue. Uh, if we can get those out next week, that would be solid. Look, I'm gonna put Mike on the phone, let him complete it. Like, unless there is some kind, unless you, know, you, you actually don't have the units, let's get this in play and maybe get some first deliveries starting Thursday. Good for you? That's how that conversation yeah. would go between yeah. procurement managers. Yeah, there's a level of trust there in that conversation though. It's insider. It's insider yeah. talking to insider. When you come in and you just say, I'm trying to win your approval from the outside as opposed to I'm inside your business. I'm going to talk to you about supply and demand and economics. We're going to drive towards some kind of contractual relationship. If it falls apart in any part, no problem. I'm okay with that. It has to be moving forward for me to stick in here. I'm busy. So clearly free this, this setting. Is the, this, this is the context, but this is status. Yeah. Right. If you come in as a supplicant, you'll be framed in the low status position. Yeah. So certainly setting the frame and, and establishing your status and, and it's really interesting, you know, those little, those little signals that you're sending out all of the time, whether you're, you know, you're accepting of the, uh, few minutes that you know you're willing to to give to people your screen just went off for him there no i'm putting you big 
There you go. There we wow. go. <laughs> All right. I want to, I want to listen to you properly. I want to listen to this question. So what, I, what, I, what I'm saying, I don't know whether you're playing with me now or not, but this is interesting. No, what, what, so ultimately setting the frame, but establishing your status to make sure that this is a 50, 50 partnership that we're entering into is so critically important just being really mindful of the signals that you're sending out in terms of uh, I, permitting the, the, the abuse of your time. Uh, yeah. The, 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 the little signals that you're sending out around uh, somebody maybe not listening to your full presentation, maybe them having to excuse themselves some part way through all of those things are so critically important in terms of actually maintaining the status. So anything else practically we can do to, I suppose, remind yeah. ourselves as we're going into those meetings to, in terms of maintaining our status to maintain this 50, 50 relationship. Here is the framework. This is the language I would give you. Brandon, I'm glad we got together today. I'm really excited about meeting you. You would be one of our most important accounts if we decided to work together. And this is why I've decided to invest some time trying to help you guys out. To the degree that we can find a way to work together, uh, you know, and, and set, that, set those ideas in motion today, I'm willing to continue investing. Now, obviously, you're trying to solve some problems in your business. It's something that we do all the time. And I'm happy to contribute some time, some energy to helping you figure out how to solve your problem. Now, I think it goes without saying, I'm not going to work harder on your business than you will. So this is not a situation, clearly, where we sit here and I go, these are our features, these are our products, this is our value proposition, this is our pricing, this is our discount. And you go, yeah, yeah, give it up. You know, what else can I get? What else can I get? What else can I get? You are going to be contributing, obviously not those things, those are things we know how to do. But you're going to be contributing, you know, energy, quick response times on the stuff we move back and forth. I've done this a thousand times. I know what somebody looks like when they're actually trying to solve their problem and, and are, are in partnership to make their business better. I'm not going to work on your business harder than you will. I will work on it as hard as you will. Okay. You guys got yourself in the position. I didn't. We don't have these problems. Our accounting system works fine. Yours doesn't. Not a criticism, right? But it needs to be fixed. It needs to be fixed professionally. You know, uh, and the, the program needs to be funded correctly, but we'll be there to make it happen. Right? Um, and, and so the last thing, Brendan, is, um, is it's super important to spend some time today for you seeing our product, how we do it, who we've done it for, the features, the benefits, the timing, the costs, all of that. And you need to spend some time here evaluating us. That's why I came. That's why we're working together today in the, in the hour that we have, TikTok, because I have to bounce at the end of the hour. Uh, but we also have to leave some time for me to evaluate you. So as much as you're evaluating us, we're also evaluating you. I don't know if we're smart and I don't know if we're lucky, but we're super busy. And what comes hand in hand with that is we have the luxury of being choosy about who we work with. So let's have some fun. Let's work together today. Let's see, let, let's throw all your problems out on the table, right? It's all in confidence. We're in the confidential business. Don't hold anything back. Let's get in the mosh pit. Let's talk to each other. Let's figure out how to get you to where you want to be. Uh, and, and let's convince me that I want to invest my time and our company's resources in helping you out. All right. Now, for, 
And there we go. That's exactly word for word how to do it. Women can do it. Children can do it. Buddhists can do it. Yoga teachers can do it. That There's no swearing in there. There's no yelling. Right? That comes next. But um, <laughs> I love that. In the interest of time and completeness, Oren, before we move into the close, just yes. uh, complete out the, the, the strong acronym. We've, we focused a huge amount of time on the setting the frame and, of course, the status, which is, which is embedded within the, the actual strong method of pitching. So just for the, for the benefit of the listeners, finish out the, 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 the actual the acronym in terms of the method. Yeah. So set the frame, tell the story. Right. And, and, and the story is the narrative about the origin story. Why what you do is hard. Unless I believe what you do is difficult, then I will not respect it. And I will go look for other people who do it cheaper. So most people just start the presentation with what they have. There's no origin story. Right. Um, and again, the origin story frames out how difficult it was to get this technology, to get this service, to get this capability. Not only that, how difficult it is to truly solve these problems in totality. Sure, the problem can be quote unquote solved, but it will have to be fixed and fixed over and again to really come in and do this completely, right? Or to provide the solution we have, it is a difficult task that we undertake. It's actually more difficult than the money we make. We do it because this is our purpose and our values are connected to uh, you know, what we're doing. And so the, the good thing about that is if we price it wrong or we overcommit, we, we don't stop when we're tired. We stop when we're done because we believe in what we're doing. We're not selling used cars. And if we were selling used cars and we were purposeful about it, you know, and the car didn't work, we would take it back or we would fix it because, right? So this is something we, we believe in. Um, so that has to happen. Uh, that's the story, the yeah. origin story, yeah. why this is hard, right? So uh, set the frame, tell the story, reveal the intrigue. Somebody, the, the true sales framework, right? Is, is the setup, which is raising the stakes, setting the frame, okay? Then creating intrigue about the solution and revealing the solution in the end, right? So when it, it is um, not telling somebody you have the features, but getting them intrigued about the features you have. Yeah. We, inside this box, is an incredible solution that fixes all your problems. What's in the box? I'm not going to tell you right now. In this software package is an incredible set of features and that will solve all your problems. What are those features? You're not ready to learn those yet. Intrigue about you show them the box, but not what's in it. So that's reveal the intrigue. Then we can get into the offer, right? And the offer is uh, work with us. This is the rough pricing. These are the terms. And if you're agreeable to moving forward on that, then we can send over, like we do not send proposals. So here's the offer. We don't send proposals. Well, Warren, we get proposals all the time from all, great. You know who writes proposals? Companies have nothing to do, okay? What a, <laughs> you know, but crank out proposals all day long. How, how does that, right? Here's what I will do. I'll invest a couple of hours to write up an agreement, like a proposal, what I put in the proposal, right? Just a bunch of like, you know, po possible things. Why would I do that? We're talking right now. Tell me what you need. We will write them up in an agreement. You look at that agreement, and then we can redline the agreement and sign. Companies that are busy will craft agreements. It still takes two to three hours for something of this magnitude to craft an agreement. I hope you're not asking me to spend 12 hours crafting a proposal, right? Have that proposal shopped out, come back to me, request a pricing, and, and, you know, and then put another three hours in agreement 
So that's, that makes no sense. We wouldn't do that. It's not an honest process. Tell me what you need. Let's agree to something standardized. We'll put it in a basic agreement that is boilerplate. Your legal guys will look at it and go, yeah, we've seen this a thousand times. Just sign it. I have a story there, but we run out of time. Okay. Uh, so the, the, that's the offer is to put an agreement out, right? The, and, and what I tell people is one thing I hate the most is when a venture firm goes, yeah, we'll send you over a letter of intent. I go, great. What's in it? Oh, well, we'll send it over to you. No. Why, why would you send me something that we can't talk about? That just tells me it's going to be, you know, like a crappy um, clickbait of something that you hope we take that we wouldn't, we would in no world agree to in, in conversation. But now you're going to send over in writing, and maybe we're like, ah, oh, yeah, we're desperate, and we'll just sign it. Don't do that. Don't send me anything that we can't talk about in advance. So, so yeah, we'll be sending over an agreement. So that's the offer, right? Um, uh, N is nail the hook point. And we'll just finish that. There's some point in a relationship where you do all this correctly and they start contributing. That's the hook point where you are no longer setting the frame. They are in your frame and participating in it. So you have made the sandbox. And now they are free to roam. You no longer have to do frame control. There's no control. There's no sales mechanisms. There's no gamesmanship. There's no brinksmanship. There's no nothing because you've had created a sandbox and now they can run around with all the little toys and buckets and then in the <laughs> sandbox, right? So once mom gets a kid into the sandbox, she can eat a sandwich and talk to the, you know, her friend and not be watching him the whole time because he's in the sandbox playing. Don't have to, no control. And now we've got so true 50 50. Now it's true 50 50. You guys are working together and you don't have to worry about any control mechanisms yeah. at all. And then, you know, so that's nail the hook point. You know it's sold or done when they are inside your frame and contributing. And then finally is get the money. And I would just say this because I'm getting tired. Um, between the dock and the ship lie many a slip. So true. It's probably so Irish. True. So true. I, I, I would be surprised if it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. that's, so, that, is, that is so, what, so true. Here's where people lose is this works so well, everything we talked about today. They're like, it's a done deal. I don't have to do anything else. You still have to maintain frame control until the payment is made. Yeah, Com completely agree. And I've seen, I've, I've seen that happen in the past. And you know the, the months, in some cases, years have been wasted in that in the in the belief that you've already crossed the line and, and we always say i mean the order isn't the order and so you've received your 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 full deposit uh, until the money's in the bank so uh, and so that's uh, where your values so what lets the what gets the money is your values yeah yeah hey brendan i think what you heard from us and you've seen over time when we say we do something we do it yeah and i don't think it would sound weird to you to know that we ask our counterparties to hold that same standard. Yeah. Where are we on this? If Just tell me what's going on. I'm okay with anything. We're busy. If you're out, you're out. You're in, you're in. But as things begin, relationships are always the best at the beginning. They never get better. <laughs> yeah, so, so, and so if you're doing so. weird things, if you're doing weird things, eight minutes into our relationship, it's concerning. Yeah. I'd be a bad business person if I didn't pull this out and at least talk it through. What's going on with you? Oren, that has been an absolute masterclass. Uh, I really, really appreciate your time and sharing your wisdom with us today, with all the listeners. I always close by asking our guests to share three timeless takeaways. Sure. Number one, between the dock and the ship, lie many a slip. Uh, the, I think the other one is, if you watch the movie Patton, 
uh, you'd be you know familiar with this, but beware, um, you know, beware intelligence that is just the moving around of rubber tanks. Are they just moving around rubber tanks? You know that story, right, in World War II, that Patton, you know, created this whole fake army of rubber tanks, and they would move them around. The Israelis, you know, do that too. Are they just moving around rubber tanks? And I think um, the, um, you know, the other one is, so three timeless takeaways. It's funny because I have millions of these every day, but now you got put me on the spot. <laughs> and I actually have to come up with, you know, three that I really love. Uh, but I would say um, the, you know, if coming to a meeting on time, you're already late. Yeah, we had a, a young Texas lady who worked in a marketing department. She used to say, "If you're five minutes, if you're five minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late, and if you're late, you're out of the game." I thought it was brilliant. So, I guarantee you, she was in the Navy. That's that day saying? one. That yeah, that's week one, day one in the Navy. There you go. Brilliant. Well, look. Tell me before we close, what's next for you? Oh, um, I need to start. Um, I need to start telling the world about the books again. You know, that's that's important because these books changed lives. You know, now I have a busy business and people read the books. You know, they come in and hire us. We need to start reminding the world about this technology because I've seen it double the revenue inside of $20 million companies. I've seen $20 million company go from 20 to $40 million in a year by doing what we talked about here today. I had a woman who came in here to an event, was trying to raise money with a big pitch deck and explain it. It was zero revenue, just a concept. We did all of this. I took the deck away, no deck. What do you need a deck for? You have no company. And she raised $5 million in the next 30 days. Wow. Wow. Total reality in terms of this working every day. So for me, I just want to remind the world that this is actually a technology that's, it's funny. I get calls from guys at Goldman Sachs, you know, guys managing billion dollar funds and they go, hey, 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 Oren, I wouldn't want to talk to you. You know, you know, um, you didn't invent this stuff. I go, well, well I never claimed to invent it. Like I just lived through capital markets and I just, and he goes, yeah, but we love the way you wrote it down. Just want to let you know. We do this every day. I'm like, yeah, I, just saw, I know. I didn't invent anything. I just, they're like, but we, we, we love. I, I went to an investment bank on a small $20 million financing. I go in the room, 25, 24 year olds pour into the room and the managing director. And I go, uh, hey, John, this is a lot of uh, associates for a $20 million deal. What the fuck is going on here? He goes, oh, no, no, they're not on the deal. They just want your signature for the book. <laughs> Very good. I think that's when you know you've got frame control and a little bit of status. <laughs> so well done, you. Tell me this, or and share with our listeners, please. If anyone wants to reach you, where best to to connect with you? Pitchanything.com. Brilliant. And, and I think one thing that we screw up is if you put your name in, we give so much of this away. We, you know, we have events here in this facility. You know, if you look here, I think you yeah, can see the wonderful, facility. Wonderful setup. Yeah. So, wow. so we have events here in the facility, but we sort of give all the content away and then we want you to come here to experience it in person. Brilliant. Well, look, we're, we'll put link to pitch anything in the, in the show notes, which we have here and then flip yeah. the script, of course, is your other book and uh, anything else that you want us to, to share with the, the listeners more than happy to do that. Or, and look, it's been an absolute pleasure to, as I say, to spend time with you today. Uh, I wish you all the very best in everything that you're doing. And uh, look, let's stay connected. 